Welcome to the One Year Bible, July 7. The Old Testament reading, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 5, through chapter 5, verse 17. Ashur, the father of Tekoa, had two wives named Hila and Nara. Nara gave birth to Ahuzam, Hefer, Temeni, and Hahashtari. Hila gave birth to Zareth, Hisar, Ethnon, and Koz, who became the ancestor of Anub, Zaboba, and all the families of Aharal, son of Harun. There was a man named Jabez who was more honorable than any of his brothers. His mother named him Jabez because his birth had been so painful. He was the one who prayed to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. And God granted him his request. Caleb, the brother of Shuha, was the father of Mehir. Mehir was the father of Eshton. Eshton was the father of Beth Rapha, Pasia, and Tehina. Tehina was the father of Irnehesh. These were the descendants of Reka. The sons of Kenaz were Othniel and Sariah. Othniel's sons were Hathath and Meonathai. Meonathai was the father of Ophra. Sariah was the father of Joab, the founder of the Valley of Craftsmen, so called because they were craftsmen. The sons of Caleb, son of Jephunneh, were Iru, Elah, and Nam. The son of Elah was Kenaz. The sons of Jahalalel were Ziph, Zipha, Tiria, and Azarel. The sons of Ezra were Jether, Mered, Epher, and Jalon. One of Mered's wives became the mother of Miriam, Shemai, and Ishba, the father of Eshtemoa. He married a woman from Judah who became the mother of Jared, the father of Gedor, Heber, the father of Soko, and Jakuthiel, the father of Zenoah. Mered also married Bithia, a daughter of Pharaoh, and she bore him children. Hodiah's wife was the sister of Naham. One of her sons was the father of Kela, the Garmite, and another was the father of Eshtemoa, the Maacathite. The sons of Shimon were Amnon, Rena, Benhanan, and Tilon. The descendants of Ishi were Zoheth and Benzoheth. Shelah was one of Judah's sons. The descendants of Shelah were Ur, the father of Lika, Laada, the father of Marashah, the families of linen workers at Beth Ashbia, Jokim, the men of Kozabah, and Joash and Seraph, who ruled over Moab and Jeshubi Lehem. These names all come from ancient records. They were the pottery makers who lived in the time and Gadara. They lived there and worked for the king. The sons of Simeon were Jemuel, Jamim, Jarib, Zohar, and Shaul. The descendants of Shaul were Shalom, Mibsam, and Mishma. The descendants of Mishma were Hamuel, Zakur, and Shimei. Shimei had sixteen sons and six daughters, but none of his brothers had large families, so Simeon's tribe never grew as large as the tribe of Judah. They lived in Beersheba, Mulada, Hazar Shaul, Bilha, Ezem, Tolad, Bethuel, Horma, Ziklag, Beth Markoboth, Hazir Susim, Beth Biri, and Sharaim. These towns were under their control until the time of King David. Their descendants also lived in Etam, Ain, Rimon, Token, and Ashan, five towns and their surrounding villages as far away as Baaloth. This was their territory, and these names are listed in their genealogical records. Other descendants of Simeon included Meshobab, Jamlek, Josha, son of Amaziah, Joel, Jehu, son of Joshebiah, son of Sariah, son of Aziel, Elionai, Jak, Boha, Jeshohiah, Asahiah, Adiel, Jesimiel, Benaiah, and Ziza, son of Shifi, son of Elon, son of Jediah, son of Shimri, son of Shemaiah. These were the names of some of the leaders of Simeon's wealthy clans. Their families grew, and they traveled to the region of Gerar, in the east part of the valley, seeking pasture land for their flocks. They found lush pastures there, and the land was spacious, quiet, 
and peaceful. Some of Ham's descendants had been living in that region, but during the reign of King Hezekiah of Judah, these leaders of Simeon invaded the region and completely destroyed the homes of the descendants of Ham and of the Maonites. No trace of them remains today. They killed everyone who lived there and took the land for themselves because they wanted its good pasture land for their flocks. Five hundred of these invaders from the tribe of Simeon went to Mount Seir, led by Pelatia, Neriah, Rephiah, and Uziel, all sons of Ishi. They destroyed the few Amalekites who had survived, and they have lived there ever since. The oldest son of Israel was Reuben, but since he dishonored his father by sleeping with one of his father's concubines, his birthright was given to the sons of his brother Joseph. For this reason, Reuben is not listed in the genealogical records as the firstborn son. The descendants of Judah became the most powerful tribe and provided a ruler for the nation, but the birthright belonged to Joseph. The sons of Reuben, the oldest son of Israel, were Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The descendants of Joel were Shemaiah, Gog, Shimei, Micah, Reiah, Baal, and Bera. Bera was the leader of the Reubenites when they were taken into captivity by King teglath pileser of Assyria. Bera's relatives are listed in their genealogical records by their clans. Jael, the leader, Zechariah, and Bela, son of Azaz, son of Shema, son of Joel. The Reubenites lived in the area that stretches from Aror to Nebo and baal Meon, And since they had so many livestock in the land of Gilead, they spread east toward the edge of the desert that stretches to the Euphrates River. During the reign of Saul, the Reubenites defeated the Hagrites in battle. Then they moved into the Hagrite settlements all along the eastern edge of Gilead. Next to the Reubenites, the descendants of Gad lived in the land of Bashan, as far east as Selica. Joel was the leader in the land of Bashan, and Shepham was second in command followed by Jainai and Shaphat. Their relatives, the leaders of seven other clans, were Michael, Meshulam, Sheba, Jorai, Jachin, Zia, and Eber. These were all descendants of Abihel, son of Huri, son of Jeroah, son of Gilead, son of Michael, son of Jeshai, son of Jahdo, son of Buz. Ahi, son of Abdiel, son of Guni, was the leader of their clans. The Gadites lived in the land of Gilead, in Bashan and its villages, and throughout all the pasture lands of Sharon. All of these were listed in the genealogical records during the days of King Jotham of Judah and King Jeroboam of Israel. The New Testament reading, Acts chapter 25, verses 1 through 27. Three days after Festus arrived in Caesarea to take over his new responsibilities, he left for Jerusalem, where the leading priests and other Jewish leaders met with him and made their accusations against Paul. They asked Festus as a favor to transfer Paul to Jerusalem, planning to ambush and kill him on the way. But Festus replied that Paul was at Caesarea and he himself would be returning there soon, so he said, those of you in authority can return with me. If Paul has done anything wrong, you can make your accusations. About eight or ten days later, Festus returned to Caesarea, and on the following day, he took his seat in court and ordered that Paul be brought in. When Paul arrived, the Jewish leaders from Jerusalem gathered around and made many serious accusations they couldn't prove. Paul denied the charges, I am not guilty of any crime against the Jewish laws, or the temple, or the Roman government, he said. Then Festus, wanting to please the Jews, asked him, Are you willing to go to Jerusalem and stand trial before me there? But Paul replied, No, this is the official Roman court, so I ought to be tried right here. You know very well I am not guilty of harming the Jews. If I have done something worthy of death, I don't refuse to die. But if I am innocent, 
No one has a right to turn me over to these men to kill me. I appeal to Caesar. Festus conferred with his advisors and then replied, Very well, you have appealed to Caesar, and to Caesar you will go. A few days later, King Agrippa arrived with his sister, Bernice, to pay their respects to Festus. During their stay of several days, Festus discussed Paul's case with the king. There is a prisoner here, he told him, whose case was left for me by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the leading priests and Jewish elders pressed charges against him and asked me to condemn him. I pointed out to them that Roman law does not convict people without a trial. They must be given an opportunity to confront their accusers and defend themselves. When his accusers came here for the trial, I didn't delay. I called the case the very next day and ordered Paul brought in. But the accusations made against him weren't any of the crimes I expected. Instead, it was something about their religion and a dead man named Jesus, who Paul insists is alive. I was at a loss to know how to investigate these things, so I asked him whether he would be willing to stand trial on these charges in Jerusalem. But Paul appealed to have his case decided by the emperor, so I ordered that he be held in custody until I could arrange to send him to Caesar. I'd like to hear the man myself, Agrippa said. And Festus replied, You will, tomorrow. So the next day, Agrippa and Bernice arrived at the auditorium with great pomp, accompanied by military officers and prominent men of the city. Festus ordered that Paul be brought in. Then Festus said, King Agrippa and all who are here, this is the man whose death is demanded by all the Jews, both here and in Jerusalem. But in my opinion, he has done nothing deserving death. However, since he appealed his case to the emperor, I have decided to send him to Rome. But what shall I write the emperor? For there is no clear charge against him. So I have brought him before all of you, and especially you, King Agrippa, so that after we examine him, I might have something to write. For it makes no sense to send a prisoner to the emperor without specifying the charges against him. Psalm 5, verses 1 through 12. O Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay attention to my groaning. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God, for I pray to no one but you. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. O God, you take no pleasure in wickedness. You cannot tolerate the sins of the wicked. Therefore the proud may not stand in your presence, for you hate all who do evil. You will destroy those who tell lies. The Lord detests murderers and deceivers. Because of your unfailing love, I can enter your house. I will worship at your temple with deepest awe. Lead me in the right path, O Lord, or my enemies will conquer me. Make your way plain for me to follow. My enemies cannot speak a truthful word. Their deepest desire is to destroy others. Their talk is foul, like the stench from an open grave. Their tongues are filled with flattery. O oh God, declare them guilty. Let them be caught in their own traps. Drive them away because of their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them sing joyful praises forever. Spread your protection over them, that all who love your name may be filled with joy. For you bless the godly, O Lord. You surround them with your shield of love. Proverbs 18, verse 19. An offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city. Arguments separate friends like a gate locked with bars. Psalm 